Hey coach, thanks for meeting with me. Now, I just got back from my recruiting trip and I wanna show you a few recruits who I think we should go after this year. But first, I wanna show you a special kid. I happen to just catch him on YouTube. Just look at this clip here. Rolling out to the left, throwing back to across the middle of the field. And man, look at this throw right on the money. I didn't know who this kid was. I had to Google him to see who he was. But look at where this ball lands. I mean, it lands just about at the 37 yard line. And he threw that pretty much at his in the end zone and getting hit on the throw. I mean, this kid can play. So I decided to call his high school coach and decided to go to a game of his. And he is good. He's athletic. He plays both sides of the ball. He plays quarterback for them. He played cornerback uh, mostly last year and then decided to play quarterback this year when their starting quarterback went down. He's good. I know we just lost JPE. I think that Devin Parker could replace him in the future as far as having a guy that can run like JPE. I guess we'll have to see how JPE recovers from that shoulder injury he suffered uh, a couple weeks ago. But let's look at the rest of these recruits here that I brought back for you. Daquan Jordan, he's very, very good. I think, in my opinion, he's a, a good athletic, good size receiver. He's six foot three. And then I decided to bring some more size in. Maurice Parks is a really good player as well. He has good jumping ability. He's going to go up and get it. He's not really the best route runner, but I think he's an outside receiver who we can groom and maybe even move to tight end if we really, really need him. I guess we'll have to see. Now, Cabe Kaiser is a speed back. I really love this kid. He has awesome breakaway speed. He does actually lack a little bit as far as the strength department, but I think that this guy could be a third down, a two down back, but I'm not really sure if maybe he will be a you know workhorse type of back. I definitely think he's gonna have maybe a year to really get used to the college speed. And then there's Daniel Yates. I really like this kid. He's a good pass rusher, awesome power. He's gonna be excellent coming in as a freshman. Now, I know JPE was hurt. I hope that Devin Parker can hopefully, you know, provide some more stability to that dual threat type of quarterback we have. But let's get this win next week. Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And welcome back to the Charlotte 49ers Dynasty. Now, we did lose JPE to injury last week. And, I mean, it's very, very unfortunate to lose. He's out for the season. So, we will have to rely on Brian Rochford. Now, Rochford did start for us to begin last season. And, you know, I like Rochford a lot. He is a guy that is accurate. He is not going to take many chances. He's not too athletic, but he can run a little bit if he needs to. I definitely want to get some other guys involved, though, in our offense. Don Trill Jones is a freshman to watch out for. He's an excellent route runner. And then Brooklyn Santana, I still want to get him going. Haven't done that yet, but we definitely want to run the ball now with Rochford under center. Going up against Purdue, who is number 22 in the country right now. And they have one of the top defenses to put to start this season. So let's get this game underway as Purdue will start out with the ball. And here is their best uh, player on their squad, Bell. He falls backwards, and David Bell picks up a gain of 15 on that return. He was over 100 yards last week. He had a touchdown as well, six receptions. And now here comes their quarterback out under center. This is Jack Plummer, first and 10. He runs the option to the left side, and he's going to get stopped behind the line. That is Gary Anderson. So Anderson, remember, did lead our team in sacks last year. Here's a second and 12 keeper. This time Plummer to the right side, and he picks up a gain of 11. Vincent Youngblood on the tackle. I definitely want to start getting after the quarterback more. We did a little bit last week. I definitely want to make it so that it's not, you know, covered sacks. I want to get sack sacks, getting into the quarterback, getting pressure. And now here they are with a fresh set of downs. This is Daru. He's going to break a tackle. He's off to the races, and he's got speed to the 10, the 5, touchdown. And King Daru runs all the way to the end zone. It's a touchdown. Purdue strikes first. Charlotte's going to have a tough time if we can't stop their offense. 
So for third and five, here's a throw to the sideline. And we had a man wide open across the middle of the field. And it looks like Rochford just missed him. And it's a first down, though. We still move the chains. So Rochford is that guy that's not going to take many chances. That's maybe why he didn't throw down the field that time. Here's Brooklyn Santana across the middle. He's got it. And that's another gain of 16. Rochford looking good. First couple of passes. So under center this time, here's Rochford, handoff, Terrence Pitt Howard has space. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to hammer the ball with him. We already know Terrence Pitt Howard is that type of workhorse back. He's a big power guy. And now here we are just about inside the red zone. Throw to the sideline, and it is caught. Chris, Christopher Dalton on that catch. So now third and three handoff, Terrence Pitt Howard falls in. It's a touchdown. Great opening drive for this Charlotte team. And it's 7-7 at that point. Move on to the second quarter now, down by three. Here's Brooklyn Santana with the catch to the left side. And we've gotten him involved pretty early. Rochford's made it a point to get his receivers going. Handoff to the right side, Pitt Howard. He just gets tripped up. It's a gain of six. So now Rochford close to about the 45. Here's a throw to the right side. It's Devon Cash this time. He's spreading the wealth so far in the first half. Cash has three receptions as well. So three and a half to go here in the first half. Running his man in motion, Rochford. Perfect throw to Dalton inside the five. 20 yard gain. Great throw by Rochford. Leading his target, Christopher Dalton. So inside the five handoff, Terrence Penn Howard, he gets in. Second touchdown of the game. And Charlotte, how about this? Taking the 14 to 10 lead here with two minutes to go here in the first half. So here's Jack Plummer this time running the option. He pitches it out to Bell, who's their best player, and they find a way to get him the ball. 20 yards It's a first down. And that's the thing. Charlotte has given up so many yards on the ground. We definitely need uh, something in recruiting to help us with stopping the run because you can just see back-to-back 20-yard -back gains, one by Bell, one by Plummer. Remember, King Daru already ran like a 50-yard gainer already. Here is Carr with a catch to the left side. He picks up. A gain of nine, Purdue calls a timeout before halftime. So trying to get into the end zone, they are in a field goal range. Here's Purdue, Jack Plummer from the shotgun, quick throw, Sullivan inside the 10, a gain of 13, goal to go. So under 30 seconds left here, they have it at about the two yard line now, five wide out there, throw to the sideline, it's caught. Malik Carr, touchdown. 17 to 14 here at the end of the first half for Purdue. And it looks like the receiver did get a foot in bounds. As we move on to the second half, down by three. Here's a quick throw, Brooklyn, he has it. And another first down throw. I think this is what the offense is with uh, Rochford under center. It's more play action, quick throw. You gotta throw right when they cut on their routes. Here's Pitt Howard, he cuts it back, breaking a tackle, look at him still fighting. Gain of 23. It's a first down. 14 attempts, 89 yards for Pitt Howard. He's running the ball well. It looks like we have an all-around game with Rochford under center. Here is Rochford. This time the pressure gets to him. Loss of 12. This is going to make it a third and very long. Dante Hunter got around the tackle. It's now third and 22. They send the pressure. Quick throw to the right side. It's Cash who spins, and he almost breaks it free. Tackled at about the four yard line. Devon Cash with four catches in this game. We tie it up at 17. Here is Plummer now, close to the red zone. Handoff. King Daru breaks a tackle and he breaks free. Tackle inside the five. Gain of 26. And he's got over 100 yards rushing on just nine carries. So, first and goal, quick throw, and it's caught. David Bell, touchdown. Jack Plummer is a big. Big quarterback. He just throws it over the top. Great protection by the offensive line. And it's 24 to 17, down by seven now. Here's Rochford under pressure. He's going to take off to the right side. He picks up a lot of room and he gets to about the 48, sliding down. It's a first down. How about Rochford showing off the athleticism? So across the 50 now. Here is Rochford. Quick throw. Dalton out of the tight end position. He's kind of hiding right there. Gain of 11. So now second and three, another quick throw. It's Devon Cash this time. 
gain of 13. You can just see how the difference between Rochford and JPE. Rochford just gets rid of the ball quickly. And now they're eventually inside the five. Handoff, Terrence Pitt Howard, first and goal. And he picks up just a gain of one. So we're gonna try to run the ball once again on the second and goal. And this time, Purdue saw that coming. We had a different formation, kind of the same concept though. Third and goal now, back at about the six yard line now. Running Kung Yashu in motion this time. Rochford dumps it off short. Enzi Labata, can he fight? And he can't gain of three. Now to the two, fourth and goal. We're gonna run the ball again. We've run the ball two times already. Hand off, Terrence Pitt, Howard is stopped. What a play by Purdue. They stuffed it out quickly because look at this hole. It was there for a second, but it closed up quickly. And now Purdue, all they have to do is get a couple of first downs and we will burn our timeouts. Here's Plummer throwing, sideline caught. Milton Wright, gain of nine. So they continue to move this clock now. I'm under two minutes left. King Daru, another big gain. Look at the vision as well. Breaking tackle still on his feet. It's a gain of 27 and a first down. We call our first timeout. A minute 45, handoff, King Daru. And another great hole opened up for him. Gain of 12. And now it looks like this could dwindle down as we burn all three timeouts. And they eventually get all the way to the 10 and we end up losing this close game. And we drop to 0 and 4 in conference non-conference play. 0 and 4 to start the season, 0 and 4 non-conference play. Not the season that we were looking for here going into the AAC. And it, the funny thing is that I thought that we could go 2 and 2 here. I thought this stretch we can go 2 and 2 especially versus Kansas and maybe not beating Purdue, but I thought one of the first games we could win, but that didn't happen. We have been getting destroyed in the ground game. We can't stop the run at all. I think it's now very, very important that we have to go all in. Our number one overall recruit, Daniel Pierre, he's gonna not even not only help us in our passing game and, and rushing the passer, but also stopping the run. I think stopping the run has now become one of our biggest priorities on this team. We definitely need linebackers who can stop the run as well because now we're 0-4. We're in trouble going into conference play because we don't have any type of momentum and we'll have to see how we start out this uh, you know, conference play here in the AAC. We go up against Duke in our first matchup. Appalachian State has adjusted well, though. They're 4-0 to start the season and number 10 in the country. Excellent start by them, led by sophomore Eric Taylor. And here we play up against Duke. They're 1-2 on the season. Uh, Holmgren is... Not a mobile quarterback, but he has five touchdowns uh, on the ground. He's actually a decent quarterback, not really a guy that's going to make too many mistakes. But I think we can, you know, contend with this Duke team. They had one of the top receivers in the nation, but he has been redshirted this year. So we'll see if he even, I mean, he's not even going to get in for like a couple of years. So we'll see what happens here as we move on to the conference play. Now, we do have a commit here after that loss. Jamar Parker, he ends up committing to us. He is a pass rushing Juco, and I have a rule about Juco's. If I do get one Juco, they do have to start. So I'm, I might go after one Juco a year. I might change that, who knows, but he's our first, uh, and he does commit. He will start right away because I want Juco's to play. So he is gonna be one of the pass rushers we're bringing in next season. And this is also a big game in recruiting as well. Dominic Gritzmacher, who is one of the best offensive linemen in the country, number one center, he is visiting this week. So here we go. Let's get this doubleheader underway as we return home with excellent weather as here is Brooklyn Santana back to receive the opening kickoff, makes a man miss, and gets to about the 22-yard line. And out comes Brian Rochford. He has been very, very good throughout his career. Let's see if he takes the next step. Here's his first pass out to the middle of the field, and it's Brooklyn. He spins, and he picks up the first down. I like how Rochford gets Brooklyn going early because it keeps the defense honest. Otherwise, teams know we're not going to throw to him. So here's a second and 10 throw to the right side, and it's caught. Kung Yashu, 14 yards. You know, our outside receivers definitely need to get better. 
I think that Brooklyn Santana is not the sharpest of route runners as we throw to the right side. How about Devon Cash? He's been getting involved, especially with Rochford into the game. Both, all three of our starting receivers get a catch on the opening drive. I love to see it. So now here's a lob pass. Kung Yashu is open. He had a few steps on that one. It's a gain of 14, wide open. Rochford makes it happen. It's now at the 14, handoff, stretch play. Pitt Howard tackled for a gain of nothing. Now Duke's front is very, very good at stopping the run. So we gotta watch out for that. Play action fake this time, throwing. And it's caught, Christopher Dalton for the touchdown. 14 yards, and look at this throw. It looks like it went straight through the hands of the defender, and Christopher Dalton just plucked it away. It's seven to nothing. You know, luck can go a long way in this game. Here's a throw to the left side. Starting out the game for Duke is Nicky Dalmolin. And he picks up a gain of 17. So let's see if he can stop this rushing attack as Holmgren takes it up the middle on a power and he takes it for a gain of seven. First down for Duke. Now just outside of field goal range, maybe their kicker can hit it from here. Here's Stevens, counter play, somehow finds that crease. It's a touchdown, Lawrence Stevens. 34 yards out, it's a 7-7 game. So Duke back on defense. Here is Jeffrey Johnson into the game. He's going to air one out. It's caught. Devon Cash to the 15, tripped up and falls at the 13. How about this? We bring in the backup quarterback for one throw down the field, and Jeffrey Johnson makes it happen. Want to watch out for Jeffrey Johnson because he's going to be the quarterback who comes in if anything happens to Rochford. He's back into the game and almost throws an interception. Jalen Alexander was in perfect position. So third and 10 this time. Rochford throws, and it's picked off by Hayward. We saw the slant route open, but we threw it slightly too late, and Hayward was right there. And what a great play by Duke stopping that drive after a 74-yard pass from Jeffrey Johnson. So now this second quarter winds down now. It's still 7-7 as we have possession back. Here is Rochford dumping it off short. NZ Labata's got it. Makes a couple of men miss. Falling forward inside the 40 to about the 38. It's a gain of 23. I really love Enzi Labata and Terrence Pitt Howard. I think that Terrence Pitt Howard is definitely a workhorse as he checks back in. Here's a throw to the right side, and he picks up a gain of 10. Now, Terrence Pitt Howard is very good at catching the ball in the backfield. I highlighted that quite a bit here. Is now here we are, first and 10 at about the 30. Here's a quick throw. Dalton, and he's got it. A gain of 11. Rochford has put together a lot of good drives here so far in these first couple of games. Here's Rochford throwing to the right side. Dalton again, making a couple men miss, and he somehow gets into the end zone for the touchdown. There was about four defenders in his face and somehow made them all miss. Look at that move, and Dalton makes it happen. It's 14 to seven. So 38 seconds left here in the first half this time. Holmgren Got trying to take ass. off. He gets hit hard. Xavier Hayes and also Billy Bugs were there for the sack. So third and 16, here's Holmgren in the pocket. Good protection, he gets rid of it, and that's gonna be at the sideline, Lawrence Stevens only a gain of one. So they settled for three before halftime. Now we move into the second half. Rochford has put together a couple of drives here that have been pretty good. Here's a throw to the right side. That is Maddie Brooks, the freshman, gain of 12. So here's a handoff this time. Terrence Pitt Howard up the middle, and he does fall forward. But it looks like maybe the defender got a little bit of face mask on that one. And yes, they are going to call it and we get an extra 15 yards. So across the 50 now, here is Rochford this time, moving, buying time. He's got a man, he's lobbing it, and it's caught. Kung Yashu open. 32 yard gain, perfect throw by Brian Rochford, and now we're inside the 15. So Rochford in the pocket this time, waiting for somebody to get open, it's a sack. Loss of 12. He's not very mobile, so when plays break down like that, he's got to take the sack. So third and 22 this time. Play action fake, just getting a little bit of that yardage back. Gain of six pushes us closer into an easier 
field goal. So we do get possession back here at the end of the third quarter. Here is Rochford, this time moving, buying some time again, throwing. He's got Enzi. He makes a man miss, but then just gets tripped up at the end of that lucky tackle, maybe. Gain of 21. So now we start the fourth quarter this time. Play action fake throwing, and it's Matty Brooks again. Falling forward, gain of 15. Great throw by Rochford. You know he has the accuracy with his arm. He's showing it today. Here's Pitt Howard, handoff up the middle. And we slowly started to run the ball here successfully as we get inside the five. Under center, here is Raj for this time. Moving, and he runs out of time, and it's going to be a sack. He goes down, Dwayne Carter gets there. It's a loss of three. We settle for three. So let's see if our offense can close out this game as our defense keeps coming up with stops. Here's a throw across the middle, and there is Dontrell Jones, one of those guys I want to get involved in the offense a little bit more each game, and he's still lined up in the slot this time as we hand out to the right side. Here's Pitt Howard, handoff, and he picks up a gain of 10. Now, I definitely want to try to explore what we could do with this offense, but it looks like this could be kind of the game plan going forward. A lot of play action, a lot of throws to the tight end, and guys at about the sticks, about 10-yard routes, and here we are, first and 10. Handoff, Pitt Howard, and look at the power. Now he's starting to bow down this defense. It didn't happen early, but now I think this defense is tired. So here we go, Rochford in the shotgun this time. He's taking off up the middle with two minutes left and he picks up the first down. Rochford moves the chains and that was actually their last timeout they called to stop the clock and Rochford did it with his legs this time. Look at him fighting for the first down marker and picking up a nice solid gain and that one will seal this game up. We get our first win of the season here versus Duke. It came in conference play and Rochford will get the game ball, definitely needs it and deserves it because coming in, filling in for JPE is not an easy task. I know JPE was struggling, but Rochford came in and actually played a solid couple of games here. Didn't throw any interceptions versus Purdue, threw one versus Duke, but threw two touchdowns as well and actually led us to a lot of nice drives. We didn't really punch it in too much. We had to settle for field goals two times on these drives, but actually three times. We had three field goals in this game, but I like what we're doing here on offense, just moving the ball down the field. Like I said, we don't always punch it in. I think it was easier to punch it in with JPE because we had you know, more of the running playbook open. We had a lot of option we could run. We just had a lot of trickery, not even option, just a lot of handoffs with motions and stuff. But now we can't do that as much because JPE is not a threat to keep the ball. And I think that we're building something, though. But one thing that is still bothering me, one sack. I mean, we got to get after the quarterback more. I don't know how that's going to happen. Sending more blitzes, I'm not sure if that will help because we do send quite a few blitzes as it is right now. So we are now 1-4 on the season. And a quick update on recruiting. Dominic Gritzmacher after that uh, visit. We actually do get some points, not as much as I would want, but we're still down quite a bit to South Carolina. But we do end up with more recruits here. Clifton Cobbin, the athletic safety who does cover a lot of ground and coverage, he commits. Cabe Kaiser, the speed back, he ends up committing to us pretty quickly. And I'm looking forward to having him on the squad, especially since I think he's probably a year away from playing because Terrence Pitt Howard and Enzi Lobato still will probably be the top two backs, but Terrence Pitt Howard will be a senior next year. John Burton ends up committing to Duke, and then obviously Jamar Parker committed to us a couple of weeks ago, I guess last week. So this is our upcoming schedule coming up, USF in Memphis and then Houston and Appalachian State. I plan on having doubleheaders for the rest of the season here, so every episode should be a doubleheader. 0-4 for USF and 1-5 for Memphis. I'm hoping that we can start out conference play 3-0 heading into that Houston game. I guess we'll have to see. I'm not really sure how that will look, but I think right now it looks good because we're playing uh, three teams in a row that had a combined two wins. So let's see if we can get it done. Hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. It's too easy. I've been there, done it, seen it. Boy, all that like Kenny. Still got crack, they feeling. Flow still hot like Phoenix. Shine so bright, I'm gleaming. 
This off top, I'm tweaking. Fresh out the rat like me. And I'm still trying to fight my demons. Cause we all gotta act like Tina. That's why I gotta ride with the Nina. Outside, it's a war going on.